Welcome to Replacing a String in Python. I'm Philip with RealPython, and today I've got an important task for you. Imagine yourself as a developer working for a company that offers technical support through one-on-one -on -one text chats. Your mission is to create a script that sanitizes the chat by removing any personal data and replacing any inappropriate language with fun emojis. The chat transcript looks like this. Every line is a message from either Support Tom or John Doe with a timestamp that looks very funky right now and their messages. You will see the transcript in detail in the next lesson. And after a hard day of work, and by that I mean after following this video course, the chat transcript must look like this. So compared to the one before, it's much, much cleaner. And again, we will go into details in one of the next lessons. And in case you're using a screen reader, you will find the before chat transcript and the after chat transcript in the description below this video. So how would you tackle this task? Of course, you could go over it by hand, but where is the fun in that? Aren't we all learning to program to lean back and let Python do a job like this? Of course we do. And in this video course, you will learn how. You'll gain some powerful knowledge on remove or replacing parts of a string or even the whole string with Python. Specifically, you'll learn how to remove or replace a string or a substring with the replace method. You will create regular expressions. You will learn about them in a moment and leverage re.sub to make complex rules and set up multiple replacement rules. Sounds good? Okay, let's get started. Again, here is the scenario for this video course. A client named John Doe has filed a complaint and the policy of your company is that you need to sanitize and simplify the transcript of this complaint before sending it for independent evaluation. On this slide, you're seeing the transcript that you'll work with. Your task is to take care of the message sanitation. In other words, cleaning up this chat transcript. This transcript might be short, but it's a perfect example of the chats that support agents handle on a regular basis. When you get data to work with, it's a good idea to investigate the structure of the data. What this means is that you have a look at the data and try to find patterns that the data shares. So before you continue, have a look at this transcript. Can you spot the components that this transcript contains? If you want, you can pause this video for this. You can also find the chat transcript in the text below this video. Every line of the transcript includes three components, a user identifier, an ISO timestamp, and a message. In particular, you have the user identifiers support underscore Tom and John Doe, both in square brackets. The timestamps all contain the date of the 24th of August, 22. Then there is a the letter T, and then the time and time zone info. This timestamp format is in the ISO 8601 format. That's the international standard for date and time related data. We'll deal with this format in a bit. For now, let's just be happy that all the timestamps have the same format. And then there are the messages. One message is in uppercase and two of them contain a swear word. To sanitize the transcript, the first thing we'll do is to take care of any swear words. And in the next lesson, you'll learn how Python can help you with this. To clean up the swear words in the transcript, you need to replace the swear word with another word. Or to phrase this as an explicit task for you as a Python developer, you need to replace a string with another string. The most basic way to replace a string in Python is to use the replace string method. You can call the replace method on any string and it takes at least two arguments. The first argument is the old string that you want to replace and the second is the replacement. You can optionally provide a third argument which is the number of replacements you want to make. If you don't provide this argument, Python will replace all occurrences of the old string with the new string. And that's what you want to do with your task at hand. So you won't see the third argument in this course. At the bottom of this slide, you can see an example of the replace method with two arguments. There is a string saying fake Python, and you're calling the replace method on the string object. The first argument is the string fake. That's the string you want to replace. 
And the second argument is the string real. That's the string you want to replace the word fake with. The output in the shell is real Python. That's much better than fake Python, in my opinion. But obviously I'm biased. Anyway, there is one important detail here. Although the Python shell displays the result of replace, the string itself stays unchanged. Let's explore what this means. First, you define a variable named name and set it to the string fake Python. Now you can use replace on name and add the two strings fake and real as arguments. When you hit enter, you can see the output real Python. If you had to guess, what do you think the value of name is now? Real Python? Well, actually not. The variable name still has the value fake Python. When you use the replace method on a string, the original value of the variable doesn't change. So what can you do instead? If you assign the result of name replace back to the name variable, the value is updated accordingly. Let's check name again. Okay, now name has the value real Python. Cool. By assigning the result of name replace back to the name variable, the value of name was updated to real Python. This distinction is crucial to keep in mind when working with the replace method. When you use replace on a string, the original value of the variable doesn't change. So remember that you always need to assign the result of replace to a variable if you want to continue to work with the output. Okay, now that we've got this covered, it's time to apply this knowledge to the chat transcript. Here you have the chat transcript again. I already assigned the content of the chat transcript to a variable named transcript. To make the code more readable, you can use triple quote syntax to define a multi-line string. Also note that you put a backslash after your triple quotes. Without the backslash, you would have a new line at the beginning of your transcript. With the backslash, you can put the transcript nicely looking in three lines after the triple quotes and put the backslash after the triple quotes to say like, hey, Python, I know there is a new line, but please remove it. Now you can use the replace method to replace the uppercase word blasted with a more polite word or a huffing emoji. When you press enter, then you can see the output in the shell. The word blasted is replaced with the huffing emoji. But there is still another occurrence of blast in the last message from John Doe. That's not surprising because the replace method only replaces the exact string you provide as the first argument. So even if the case of one letter doesn't match, it will prevent any replacements in your transcript because there are no words that match this exact case. This means that if you're using the replace method, you'll need to call it various times with the variations. In this case, you can just chain on another call to replace. So let's do it again. Transcript.replace, blasted in uppercase, huffing emoji, and another call to replace with the word blast and the huffing emoji again. When you press enter, then you can see that the output is now exactly what you want. Both the uppercase blasted and the word blast are replaced with the huffing emoji. But keep in mind, since you didn't assign the output from replace to a new variable, the original transcript still stays the same. And yeah, now we replace the swear word, but there are other things we need to sanitize. So we would have to place another replace on another replace and so on. So you might be thinking that there is a better way to handle this especially for a general purpose transcription sanitizer like the one you want to create for your work at hand, right? So instead of manually typing out replace every time, you may want to explore a more efficient approach. And you know what? There is a more efficient approach. Hop along to the next lesson to learn more about it. There are a few more replacements that you need to make to the transcript to get it into a format acceptable for independent review. Shorten or remove the timestamps and replace the usernames with agent and client. Now that you're starting to have more strings to replace, chaining on replace is going to get repetitive. So let's explore a better way to handle the replacements. 
start with a file named transcript multiple replace.py and add the transcript as a multi-line string. Okay, now let's think a moment. The way replace works is that you provide an argument pair. The first argument is the string that you want to replace, and the second argument is the replacement string. That sounds a lot like a tuple, doesn't it? So one idea could be to keep a list of tuples with two items in each tuple. The two items would correspond to the arguments that you need to pass into the replace method, the string to replace and the replacement string. So let's try that out. We make a list named replacements and add in the tuples. The first one contains blasted and the huffing emoji. The second one contains blast and the huffing emoji. The first blasted is an uppercase and the blast right now is with an uppercase letter at the start. Then you add the first part of the timestamp. So that's 2022-08-24 and an uppercase T and an empty string to replace it. Then you need to add the plus zero zero colon zero zero. You also replace this with an empty string. The support on username, which you replace with agent. Don't forget the space behind the agent because that will align the columns better. And the tuple John Doe that you replace with client. Note that client doesn't have a space at the end. So this way, client and agent with a space have both the same amount of characters and will align nicely in your clean transcript. Support Tom and John Doe both need to be in square brackets. Then you have a square bracket in line 17 to close the replacements list. With the list of replacements in place, you can iterate over the list and call replace on the transcript string. So for old, comma new in replacements, transcript equals transcript.replace, old, comma new. And then you print the transcript in the end. In this version of your transcript cleaning script, you created a list of replacement tuples, which gives you a quick way to add replacements. You then iterate over the list of replacement tuples. In each iteration, you call replace on the string, populating the arguments with the old and new variables that have been unpacked from each replacement tuple. With this, you've made a big improvement in the overall readability of the transcript. It's also easier to add replacements if you need to. So let's run the script and see what happens. Once you're in the terminal, you can run Python and then the name of your Python file, which is transcript multiple replace.py. And that's a pretty clean transcript. You replace the swear words with the huffing emoji and you replace the usernames with agent and client. Also, the timestamps are much more readable now. Well done. Your script works perfectly with the provided transcript that you've got. But you may ask, what if you get a different transcript later that day? Maybe there is another agent or another client. Also, replacing the square words won't work if there's another variation, for example, using ing or with a different capitulation. And you're right, these are valid concerns. But you know what? I got you covered. Just as if I already knew what concerns you would have. What a coincidence. You'll learn how to handle all of these concerns in the next lesson.